Broadway legend Fred Ebb, author of Cabaret in Chicago, had been looking for a new property to turn into a musical. One day, he attended a screening of the film, Kiss of the Spider Woman. I had enormous affection for the movie, and I thought they did a very good job. And I have also an affection for the Baroque, I guess. I had a tremendous affinity for the novel. I thought it was extraordinary. He immediately called his partner, John Kander. It all came about when Fred and I were thinking of projects. I called John and I said, literally, Kiss of the Spider Woman. And I said, yes, immediately. And then I called Hal and I said, Hal, I've been thinking about a show called Kiss of the Spider Woman. It's fairly uncharacteristic of me to say yes instantly. I said yes instantly. And they said, come on over. So I went right over to Fred's apartment and we started to talk. It's just an exotic story. It seemed extremely musical. It's a man who loves movies, and he loves iconographic, glamorous movie queens. That's musical comedy fodder. And then it has a challenge. I thought it would be a wonderful, unusual, daring, and uh, fascinating musical. The main influence on me, besides the musical style of it that would be fun to do, was the fact that this is a story, half of which takes place in somebody's imagination. It existed on two levels, the realistic, and the difficult, and the fanciful, which was in Molina's mind. You had to go through Molina, because to come out of someone's mind, imagination. In preparation for writing this, I listened to various musical styles. The influence of lots and lots and lots of music from all over Latin America. There was some thought given to the idea that Manuel Puig would write the musical's book, and he met with Broadway legend Hal Prince. He's a very intellectual, very, very articulate man, and he was an enchanting guy. Manuel was authentic and was wonderfully supportive and full of ideas. He had a spirit that was very infectious. How could you not respond to Manuel? I can't imagine that you're going to find anybody who didn't. He was a charming guy. He got up and did the samba at one point. <laughs> it was just fun. He would uh, physicalize it for you by going like this. Putting his hands up here, this, this sort of liver coverage. He stood there and he said, you know, movies for me are this. Musical movies are glamorous woman with both hands here. That's the pose they take. And the queen would stand this way and would lift up this way and, and push his hands that way and he would get up and he would start prancing around the office. It was so enchanting. He became, in my imagination, Molina. Manuel Puig's legacy will stand as a writer of revolutionary fiction. Some say, to know Manuel Puig, you have only to understand his greatest creation, Molina. Molina, some say, is Puig himself. But then I think we had a, a propinquity problem. He was going to be away a great much of the time. It became apparent that the distance that separated us would make it quite impossible. So I called him and said, look, this is not going to work. May I find a substitute? And he gave it his blessing. While I had never thought of Kiss of the Spider Woman as a musical, the minute the idea was broached, I thought it was terrific. Uh, it did not hesitate. Terence is just a first-rate librettist, and he knows how to do all that how to synthesize things. I did the show twice. We did it once experimentally outside of New York in a university in Purchase, New York, a new program called New Musicals on an agreement that the critics would not come to see what was done there and we could use it as a workshop. It really allowed you to learn about the piece, then you would close it down and go off and revise it and then do a production for Broadway. The whole purpose of doing it in Purchase was in a quiet, non-reviewable situation. Because the substitute writer was Terence McNally and Kandra and Ebb were on it and I was on it, there was no keeping the critics away. The Times, who we specifically were told, was not going to review it. I reviewed it and hated it. It was like reviewing a fetus. It was wrong, it was badly written, uh, we wrote all the wrong songs, we had all the wrong people in it. It was just a mess. We made a huge mistake. We ran from the prison and made it 
primarily about uh, Rita Hayworth musicals. How do you weave a story that involves Aurora, the phantom figure, the, the spider woman herself in the movie, with what's actually going on in the cell between the two men, which is what I attempted to do in the first draft of the show, and it just didn't work, frankly. That really just confused the audience. Part of the Hayworth thing was Manuel's doing, because he wrote a book about Hayworth, and he also, he loved Rita Hayworth. So we went for the naive musical, almost an innocent sex symbol. Manuel came up to see it, he called me and he was more than generous. It's going to be fine. As a lot of what I saw, I liked. I thought to myself, what a kind man, because there's not much he saw he could have liked, but he didn't say as much. That performance was the only one Puig would ever see. So having failed the first time around, we took a year's breath and came back and this time I said, you know this thing's gonna take place in a prison and always in a prison. We ended up having him imagine her whenever he needed her. What we did was we jettisoned all that Rita Hayworth innocence and said, no, 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 not, it's not about innocence, it's about overt, healthy sexuality, go for it. And it made a huge difference, a huge difference. Molina's memory of this fabulous creature were, were different movies. She uh, appeared in different numbers that you could then have them as a comment on what was going on in the story of the two men in the small cell. And the minute we bit the bullet and did the hardest thing we could possibly do, the whole thing happened. And very, very well. I'm very proud of the show. And if it wasn't for Garth Jabinski, who came along and uh finance us really. We were able to go back into production, take all the things we had learned and bring them to bear on a revision. So John and Fred and I are very grateful to Garth Drabinsky for that second chance. In a year's time we went back to work and wrote a brand new show. We opened in Toronto, we worked on it, we went after six months, we went to London where we played for six months. And by London I thought it was really excellent. We came back to New York and the original damning of it had evaporated and they accepted it and it won every award you can win. But we wouldn't have found it if we hadn't done it wrong the first time. And what really upset me was I knew that what we had persisted in would have pleased Manuel Puig enormously and it killed me that he never got to see what he deserved to see since he had been patient and loyal and enthusiastic. I think A, that he would have really liked it and B, he would have absolutely fallen in love with Cheetah. Cheetah Rivera was the Spider Woman and Aurora, and she was quintessentially glamorous. He would have adored seeing her in that part. It was like leading several lives. Aurora, you know, when she was Russian, she was Russian. When she was Latin, you know, with all the feathers and everything, she was purely Latin. She could be anything because Molina, he made her that way. I mean, I think he, he made her even better than she was. <laughs> Cheetah in white tie and tails and a white slouch fedora was thrilling. The way you are number, and that's our big show-stopping number. It's the most effective number in the show, and it's the best number in the score, and it was the highlight of the show for me. I would go in night after night just to see that number. But the point is, Rob, was the one who achieved it. Kander and Ebb said, this is a very talented choreographer. Rob Marshall really choreographed my work in, in Spider-Woman. She staged so brilliantly that I, it, it's as good as anything I've ever been involved with. I don't think it's about homosexuality, and I don't think it's about movies. I think it's an appreciation of escape. Life is tough, and no one escapes brick bats of making this long journey. Hal's brave, and I thought it was a, a brave undertaking. It's a visceral thing, in the same way people said when we were working on Cabaret about, about the politics of all of it, what we were trying to say. Same with Kiss of the Spider Woman. They have a life of their own when they come from a genius like Manuel. It's all there in the material. If you write that story well, your message will be there. The absolute validity of daydreams, dreams, fantasies, 
the necessity for them. Anyone who tries to live without that mechanism available to him is going to have a much harder life. I also loved playing death because we're all so afraid of it. And I loved playing death as an alluring, sensual, loving, caring spirit that he is afraid of, but eventually accepts. Well, Lena had hope all the time, personified by Aurora. That was his hope. That was his dream of beauty, his escape, his fantastic world. Of all of our musicals, I am most proud of The Kiss of the Spider-Woman.